How you doing everybody? So a quick little vlog. I was reading an article today where they were talking about Amazon's new codeless development platform, something called Honeycode. And I briefly Twittered about it. And there's two interesting comments in that article that I wanted to address. Number one, Amazon said we created Honeycomb, which is a, a platform that without code, you can build simple apps, which is deployed on their platform. And if it's less than 20 users, it's free. It's completely free. This video is sponsored by Proxy Crawl, which offers a set of tools to make crawling and scraping websites easy and accessible without getting blocked, thanks to their artificial intelligence. They offer crawling and scraper APIs, crawlers, lead finders, proxy back connects, and more. All that at a very competitive price with an excellent 24-7 customer support. Forget about blocks, proxies, CAPTCHAs, as that is something from the past thanks to proxy crawl tools. They've created a coupon for us that you can use to get an additional 5,000 requests for free, no card required. The coupon is Stefan underscore Mischuk, and it will allow you to start testing their crawling and scraping services for free. So of course now the usual uh, thing will happen. People who are developers, who are new to development, who are thinking about developers, are listening to me and they're going, oh no, that's it for coding. Ah. Couldn't be further from the truth. Let me go on. So number one, they said, Amazon said, uh, the reason they developed the platform is because all of their clients were saying, we can't find developers. We can't find developers to develop our simple business apps. So that's a relevant point. Another thing that they said, Amazon said, and I'm paraphrasing, and this is false, by the way, they were saying that uh, a lot of people were running their internal business operations on spreadsheets, Excel, and they had to share Excel sheets by sending copies to each other via email, and it was a disaster to maintain and so on. Now, some may still be doing this, but they haven't gotten the uh, word, they haven't gotten the letter about cloud-based office uh, tools like uh, Excel now and Google Sheets, for example. Um, in the old days, that was the case indeed. People would have spreadsheets, they would have to share it. But with modern cloud-based uh, office tools, like Google has and Microsoft has, you can create an Excel spreadsheet online share it with particular individuals, give them ability to do certain things and not do certain things. It's extremely powerful. I know people who run their multi-million dollar businesses on Google Docs using uh, spreadsheets and stuff. Now, if you understand JavaScript, and I believe Python with Google Docs, for example, you can add a lot of intelligence to your spreadsheets and make them do a lot. And then you can share them online. And uh, as I said, you can give limited permission. So you can have certain people can could log in and view uh, the spreadsheet, but not edit it and so on and so forth. And since it's all in the cloud, it's all online, you have one spreadsheet and everybody's sharing. So that statement, if that article was accurate, made by Amazon saying that people are just sharing, that's kind of like a little misrepresentation because you can actually do it with modern day office uh, tools like, uh, as I said, Google Documents and Microsoft Excel online. Uh, so there you go. Those are two major points I wanted to cover. Number one, they developed a platform because of lack of demand is coldest coding platform called uh, Honeycode, Amazon did. And number two, they said that people would do a lot of stuff on Excel and it was clunky to have to share an Excel spreadsheet uh, via email. Uh, again, that's uh, maybe I misread it, that misrepresents with modern day cloud-based uh, spreadsheet tools, that's no longer the case. You can have, uh, I said, online cloud access to a single instant instance instantiation to borrow a word from the nerd world so let me um, address the elephant in the room is this mean the end of software development for small business development not even close because what you will see is that these codeless platforms have uh, limited capabilities at the end of the day you're still going to have to write some code 
so yes, they are tools worth looking into if you're looking to develop a business-based app. So if you're a freelance developer, for example, I would go look, see what the offering is, see what Honeycode can do, and see what it can't do. And just consider it a tool in your nerd tool belt that you can leverage, whether it be Honeycode, whether it be you automating uh, Google Spreadsheets or Microsoft Excel using VB Script. I imagine they still use VB Script or Python for that. Uh, or whether you decide you're going to do a custom web app from scratch, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Whether you use WordPress or Drupal or whether you use a web framework like uh, Python Flask or Django or PHP Laravel or Ruby on Rails, which you should never use because everybody knows that. Um, there you go. So I just wanted to uh, give you a little insight into that. I have seen codeless platforms come and go, and some are pretty good. All are limited. Uh, I don't expect them to replace uh, the need for developers anytime soon. As I've said to people, uh, the demand for developers is only going up. All the reports show that. And in fact, there's going to be a lot less developers and there are jobs. So it's, uh, it's, it's become a political issue in certain parts of the world about importing people. And I'll leave with this. Again, I was contacted by a San Francisco VC venture fund who was about to invest uh, millions into a friend of mine's company, a former student of Studio Web, former student of mine, mentee of mine. And one of the first questions they asked, it was either number two or three, was what level of talent was there in Montreal? So my friend's startup was, uh, well, it's in Montreal up in Montreal, Canada, and the uh, VC people, one of their major concerns is, is there enough technical talent, is there enough programmers, developers up here in Montreal to be able to um, hire? It's an issue, it's an issue. So much of an issue that it was one of the top questions that she put to me vis-a-vis -vis the viability of the investment in my friend's company in Montreal. So. If you're ever worried about, oh, no, there's no jobs, that's not true. That is not true. Maybe if you're looking to become a flash action scripter or some other dead language or nearly dead language, yeah, maybe you might have some trouble there. But in terms of software development, it's unlimited, really. Now, if you're wondering, what do I recommend for starting out? For maximum flexibility, I recommend the web stack. That's web development web design, front end, back end. Full stack gives you most flexibility, especially if you go if you are getting into free, freelance. That doesn't mean there's no jobs in game development. There is, there's plenty. Doesn't mean there's no jobs in mobile, de mobile development. There is, but in terms of maximum flexibility and capability, think the web stack, that's HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, then I would recommend if you're freelancing, PHP, uh, maybe, uh, you know, then there's many others. There's Java and C Sharp, Python and Ruby, and there's other things you could do as well. Uh, let me leave with this. Uh, if you're just trying to decide which language to learn, look in the area where you happen to live. Check out the job listings. Get a feel for what the pulse is of your local market and study accordingly. Don't get caught up in doing 2,000 tutorials. Just do your foundations. Get out there. Do the real thing based on research in terms of where the demand is. I say that because in Bangladesh, it's probably going to be PHP. And in San Francisco, it might be uh, Ruby. That's why everybody's leaving San Francisco because they don't want to have to be programming in Ruby. Or if you're in Germany, uh, Berlin, you might, have, you might be finding yourself in a Microsoft C-sharp world. They're all viable, they all have their pros and cons, and they all can make you a lot of money. Don't start chasing the dollars. Oh, look, a data scientists make an extra 5,000 a year than the web developer. Yeah, but yeah, only on average, only in the beginning, if you, it starts to even out as you go uh, get into your career. Add in some uh, good uh, interpersonal communication skills, then your salary would go up. Um, anyway, you can look at my other videos to learn all about that. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.